Before I start, I'd like to give a big shout out to the Rare Report. That's where I get most of this information. And they do a phenomenal job on New Orleans history and New Orleans literature. So if y'all want to go check out Rare Report, y'all will be doing me a justice. Y'all enjoy this video. September 9th, 1977. A New Orleans baby boy, James Adero Tapp Jr., also known as Soldier Slim, was born into an environment that he had become a product of. Magnolia Slim, for many, was Tupac of New Orleans. With songs like From What I Was Told, I'm a Fool and Gunsmoke, I'd agree. Soldier Slim's commentary would always consist of real-life situations, and his ways of painting pictures with his smooth poetry, you could literally visualize everything he said even if you closed your eyes. Magnolia Slim would begin his musical career performing at block parties and project block parties in the early 90s. His first album, Soldier for Life, was released in 1994 with Hype Enough Records and Parkway Pumping Records, a local record label ran by legendary New Orleans DJ KLC. At the time, a young Magnolia Slim was only 17 years old, but his name would hold weight like one who was much older and much wiser. Being that Slim had grew up and was from the Magnolia Projects, one could have figured that he would be a great asset to Baby's Cash Money Records alongside of the rest of the people from his neighborhood. But due to him constantly being in and out of incarceration and his loyalty to DJ KLC, whose label at that time included Mystica, 3-9 Posse, Lil Mac, Mr. Serve, and Magnolia Slim himself, they go in a totally different direction, joining forces with the independent label owner that represents New Orleans, but grew most of his success on the West Coast. Magnolia Slim meets Percy Miller. Even though P had experienced massive success on the West Coast and also massive success as an independent label owner from the South, he was still losing touch and losing grip on the place that he called home. New Orleans was no longer his. The Bout It Bout It rapper was losing his grip, and he was losing his grip to a close neighbor. Over in the Magnolia Projects, Birdman and Cash Money Records, they was making noise, man. And with Lil Wayne, BG, Turk, and Manny Fresh as the DJ in production, it looked like they was going to be on top for a while. So P... Man, he desperately needed somebody to say the day. Now, it wasn't a mystery whether Soldier Slim was a stepper or not. In fact, he probably was the biggest stepper to ever come out of the boot. It is alleged that Soldier Slim was one of the first people putting his bodies on wax. On his album, The Streets Made Me, on the song My Jacket, he makes a quick reference to catching a body on the east side of New Orleans on Terra Lane in late 1995, according to Maul. From the east side of New Orleans, Tora Lane to be exact, Maul is currently locked up in the Union Parish, so if y'all can shoot him something, shoot him something. Now, according to Maul, Slim had gotten to some real funk in Leavenworth, and somebody had made an attempt to take his life, and they had actually hit his body. So for a brief while, Soldier Slim, who was from the Magnolia Projects, he had resided on the east side of New Orleans. Now, the east side was notoriously known for getting money. So beef and violence wasn't at an all-time high as it was in the Third Ward. Ma would state the soldier slim at the time was no older than 18 years old. He recalled soldier slim always being extremely paranoid at that time because he had just got hit up and his bullet wounds were still fresh. Now, apparently... Someone had recognized Soldier Slim that would have reported back to the people who made an attempt on his life in the 11th Ward. And Slim wasn't going to take the risk or leave it a chance. He had allegedly told Maul that he was going to park that boy right where he caught him. And that's just what he did. <laughs> Everything else from there will not be spoken on. A few years later, in 1998, he had officially changed his name from Magnolia Slim to Soldier Slim. He had dropped another body of work under the No Limit umbrella titled Give It To Him Raw, but he wouldn't be able to enjoy the fruits of his labor for too long before facing more time due to possession of illegal weapons. 
Now, he would be released in 2001, immediately getting straight back to the business, dropping his last studio hit title, The Streets Made Me, with singles like Gunsmoke, I'm a Fool, About This Shit, and My Jacket that was discussed earlier in this segment. He was backing better than ever, and with the backing of the Louisiana mogul Master P, his rise was almost certain. With the back of the Master P, Soldier Slim was now the head of the new No Limit movement. But things weren't as they were before with Master P. When originally Soldier Slim would receive $250,000 for his first album, now it was like pulling teeth trying to even get $50,000 out of Master P. So eventually, the differences between the two would cause separation and so the Slim would unite with his childhood friend, Knockout Doogie, a.k.a. former cash money artist BG, and they would get with Kosh. They would attempt to merge their imprints, Chopper City Records, with Cutthroat Committee, you heard me? But the dealings with Kosh would fall through, leaving them to search for other deals. But Slim... He was already a work in progress. This man was an artist and a label on his own imprint. He was a massive star in the making. Juvenile would summon Soldier Slim for a feature, which would lead Soldier Slim to play a song for him. And that song would be none other than Slow Motion. As the story goes, Juvenile would love the record Slow Motion so much that he would ask Soldier Slim, can he have it? And not only would he ask him, could he have it? He would ask him, could he put it on his project that he had planned to release under UTP? Yeah, he wasn't even going to put this one on the Cash Money album, even though Slim wanted him to. Soldier was like, come on, put that thing on that Cash Money album, would it? Juvie? He was like, why hell no? Juvenile wanted to make sure that Baby did not touch that single. All the while, Soldier Slim was putting verses together for 50 Cent to put hooks on, y'all. Man, he was doing dealings with 50 Cent. Although people thought he was going to join Cash Money, in all actuality, he was gearing up to be a part of the Platinum Gangster Rap Group G-Unit. He was going back and forth from Los Angeles meeting with 50 Cent. Man, he even started dating actress and singer Macy Gray. And with Soldier Slim's reputation in the streets, signing the G-Unit would have been a match made in heaven. But that reputation would precede him, and the Willow Street gangster would be now living on borrowed time. The Death of Wild Magnolia Slim November 26, 2003 on a gloomy, sad, and hollow and dark death New Orleans day, at the height of his reign, just when he was about to blow into an international superstar, one bigger than the world could even have been prepared for, Soldier Slim's life was cut down while visiting his mother in his hometown of New Orleans, making him one of the first notable rappers to be killed in her own city. Magnolia Slim would fall victim to his environment. As stated before and earlier in this story, he was a product of his environment. To some, they saw Magnolia Slim, the gangster, the thug, you know I mean? the person that be in and out Joseph. To others, he was a father. He had a son. To others, he was a brother. He had a sister, Peaches. And to the whole city of New Orleans, he was legendary. Now, some would like to compare Soldier Slim to Tupac. Soldier Slim, to me, in my opinion, was raw, realer, and more rugged. Now, Tupac was living that life. Don't get me twisted. Don't ever get it wrong. We don't never disrespect Pac over here. But Soldier Slim is one who shouldn't be compared to nobody, if you ask me. Soldier Slim was Soldier Slim. A New Orleans man by the name of Gerald Smith would later be obtained by the New Orleans Police Department and on him was the murder weapon of Soldier Slim. 
but due to lack of evidence and witnesses, he was released. Two days after his release, he was dead in the same manner as Magnolia Slim. Now, I want to get off into the conspiracy that everybody got. You know, everybody blamed Master P for Soldier Slim's demise, and I personally can't put those type of allegations on somebody because I don't know the truth behind that. I can't validate that, and I can't deny that. So I know a lot of people came here for that. Like, oh, I wonder if he going to say if he put if Master P was the one who did it or if Master P was the one who sent the hit. The world may never know what actually happened to Soldier Slim. All I can say is this, y'all. He was really a man of his people, and he was really a man living what he was rapping about. And when it come down to creativity and being unique, we'll never have another voice like him. I'm pimping like I'm done one. I'ma stop at the store, sell me an onion. Go and get some backwoods in the back of Funyun. Let a nigga play me sweet and he gon' meet the honey bun. I ain't ride with it unless he got a hundred round drum. Hit that nigga with the drink, he gon' butt 